Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use the date value function to get just the date portion of a date time field in Microsoft Access. Why is this handy? Well, sometimes you've got a date field like order date. And sometimes you use the now function maybe to get the date and time to the second that this order was placed. And that's handy for doing some things like if you want to figure out what time of day is your busiest, maybe if you're a retail location. So it's important to sometimes store that information. In fact, that's going to be the focus of my next Fast Tips video. I'm going to show you how to isolate the time and then figure out what the busiest times of the day are. But for today's video, we want to chop that time off and get just the date part. And that's good to know because if you're doing calculations, like you say, show me all the orders for, you know, this month, you might be missing some records if you don't do it right. So that's the point of this video. Before we get started, a couple of prerequisites for you. First, if you don't know how to use a calculated query field, go watch this video. Also, go watch my date math video so you understand how dates work in Microsoft Access, right? One day equals one, for example. And finally, I use the ISO date format, which looks like that, right? Year, month, day. And that way it works with everybody around the world because I got students in pretty much every country there is. So this way you're not confused as to which date format I'm using. So I, used, I, I decided to stick to this one. So go watch all three of these videos. These are free. They're on my YouTube channel. They're on my website. Go watch them and then come on back. Okay, so here I am in a copy of my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can grab a copy off my website if you want one. And in this database, I have an order table with an order date field. Now, I store the date and time when I collect this information because, like I mentioned earlier, I want to know what time of the day the order came in. But when it comes to doing calculations, if I just want to see all the orders from January, I can't just say show me everything between January 1st and January 31st because the default for a date value is that date at midnight. So you won't see this record. Let me show you what I mean. Let's go make a query out of this. Create query design. Let's bring in the order table. And I'll bring down the order ID and the order date. I'll stick a peek, see what we got. There they are. Okay. Now, if I come down here and put a criteria on. And I say show me between 2022 January 1st and 2022 January 31st, and I run that, I'm only seeing two orders, okay? Because the other one, which was January 31st, if you look at the table, January 31st at 4 p.m., that's greater than the 31st at midnight. So that's how dates work, okay? Now, if I came down here and incremented this a day, and I said between that and 2, 1, okay, and I run it now, there's that order, but if you do that with the between keyword, watch this. If I've got another order in here that happens to come in at midnight on January on uh, February 1st, okay, now when I run this, look at that. That order shows up. So you don't want to do that with the between keyword. The other alternative is to use an inequality. All right, so if I come in here, let me shift F2 so you can see it better. You could say greater than or equal to uh, January 1st and less than February 1st. And this will work, but that's, that's a lot to remember, right? Because now if I run this, okay, there's the right data, but you got to remember to use an inequality all the time. And you got to remember to say greater than or equal to the first date and less than the second date. And that's a pain. All right. So let's just get rid of that altogether. The easier way to handle this situation is to just simply make a second calculated field and just chop off that time. So I'll come over here. And again, I'll zoom in for you. Shift F2. I'll make a new field called order date only colon. And that's going to be equal to the date value of order date. It's that simple. Okay. The date value function says, give me any date time value. I'm going to chop off the time and just give you the day. Hit OK, and now when I run it, there you go. There's your new field that's got just the date in it. 
And you can use this for calculations between two dates where you don't necessarily want that time involved. So now I can say between 2022-11 and 2022-131. Like that. And run it. And there you go. You get exactly the records that you want, that you expect. This is especially critical with beginners because beginners don't always think about that. They don't know. They just think that if they type in that date that they're going to get you know, all the records on that date, and that's not how Access thinks. Now, you ready for some bonus material? Here's a little bonus for you. Ready? Time for some bonus action. Here we go. If you want to make this into a parameter query, a little bit of extra work you got to do. Watch this. If you change this to a parameter, like start date and end date, like that. Okay? Watch what happens. Now, if you don't know what a parameter query is, whatever you put inside of these square brackets, Access is going to ask you for. I'll add a link to my parameter queries video to the links section down below if you want to go watch this. But whenever you make this a parameter query, if you run this, now it's going to ask you for the start date. So if I type in 2022-11 and 2022-131, you get no records. Why is that? Well, what happens is Access converts that to text. Okay, converts that to text. So if you want to get away with this, you have to convert these back to a date. And we can do that with the C date function. C, C date, I can't type today. C date. Okay, this is a date conversion. All right, do that. Now, if you want to run it, we'll type in, now you can get away with just typing in 1 1. It'll assume the current year and 1 31. And there you go. Okay. Oh, wait, someone's beaming in. Hold on. <laughs> I love that. That that That's my cuckoo clock. My server reboots once an hour, and so it plays that before it, it does that on top of the hour. Okay, so there's your bonus for today, and this has been your fast tip, and I hope that this has taught you something. hope you learned something today. If you want to learn more about dates and times, I got two classes, each about an hour and a half long, that cover, it's my comprehensive guide to access functions, and these two classes cover date time stuff. Everything you want to know about date and time, well, most everything you want to know about date and time is covered in this, 27, 28, that's part two, and I got this thing called the Advanced Date and Time Seminar that covers all kinds of extra stuff, all of this stuff, lots of stuff, and, and even more stuff, and tons of functions, right? Is this a work day? How many network days are there between two dates? And calendar tables and all kinds of stuff reminders all right you work with a lot of dates and access this is what you want the date time seminar i'll put links to all this stuff down below hope you learned something today as the riddler said if you kill them they won't learn nothing right <laughs> okay guys i'll see you next time have a good one if you enjoyed this video please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have i do try to read and answer all of them as soon as i can Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. 
These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access, too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website. You can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.